Hi guys. So in this video, I will be explaining you prefix sum approach of solving a problem. Okay. So in the last video, I have explained about prefix product approach with the one example like product of array except self. And there we have understood like how product array prefix product approach helps us to solve that problem in O of n time complexity. So now in today's example, I will be taking taking one example of equilibrium index calculation. Okay. So how to find the equilibrium index of an array with the help of prefix sum approach. Okay, so these two are very important data structures in array, prefix product, prefix sum, and sliding window. Sliding window and prefix product product I have already covered in my past two videos. If you haven't seen that video, go back and see that video, okay, after this. And then in this video, I will be explaining about prefix sum approach and how does it work, okay. So prefix sum approach, if I focus on what's the meaning of prefix sum? Prefix sum means whatever the index value is having currently, it will sum up all the index values which is there till that index value not considering the current index till the previous index value it will sum up and then it will see like whether that is sum is equal to certain value or not so rather than uh, writing two for loops and then calculating the sum calculate maximum sum sub array it can be to calculate minimum sub array uh, to calculate like equilibrium index like the left side sum and right side sum is equal or not so if you know the meaning of equilibrium index calculation you will get to know like at any index in the entire array if the left side of that particular index and right side of that particular index's sum is equal, that means left side sum and right side sum is equal, then that particular index will be called as equilibrium index. So here also prefix sum approach helps us to solve this problem. So first of all, we need to understand that how can we solve this problem using brute force approach. Okay, so let's understand brute force approach, then we will go towards prefix some approach and then we will be moving towards constant space, how to solve this problem in constant space. Minus 7, 1, 5, 2, minus 4, 3, 0. So this is one of the example I have taken for calculating equilibrium index of the entire array. So what will be the equilibrium index for this particular array? So if you will kindly observe, so if you go and check uh, experiment one by one on the array by calculating the left side sum and right side sum you will get to know but to save our time i'm telling you that this particular index value is the equilibrium index that means if it is one based indexing then it will be like fourth index and if it is zero based indexing it will be at third index okay so why this particular index is uh, called as equilibrium index because if i see the left side minus 7 plus 1 plus 5 it is minus 7 plus 6 which is minus 1 and if i see the right side sum it will be minus 4 plus 3 that is minus 1 that means left side sum and right side sum is equal that means this particular index is the equilibrium index so that we have to solve it out so let's understand first thing like how to solve this using brute force approach so to understand it to solve using brute force approach what we can do so basically, we have to calculate a left sum as well as right sum. Okay. So at each and every index, we have to run a loop. Okay. Starting from the zeroth index to that particular ith value where the i is moving. So i is the index part, right? i is a pointer which is moving from first index to last index. Okay. So what we have to do over here, we have to take two pointers, left pointer and right pointer to calculate the left sum and right sum. Okay. So where, wherever i is moving, so let's suppose i is at this particular index value, then left sum will be starting from j. j will start from first to i and then right sum will start from i plus one th index to last index. And then we will be comparing the left sum and right sum. So if left sum and right sum is equal, then that means I have found out the equilibrium index. So here, if you can see the solution, so it's highly recommended that you try it out by yourself before looking at the solution. Okay. To save our time, basically I have uh, written down the solution for you all. So here, if you can observe, I've run the loop from zero to nth index. I'm first taking the left sum. Okay. So I have run the loop from zero to I. Okay, I'm calculating the left sum. Okay, and then I'm calculating the right sum. Okay, for each index value, for each i. So j is going from 0 to i. Okay, to calculate the left sum. And at same time, the right sum is going from i plus 1 to n. Okay, because I'm, I have to calculate the index value, equilibrium index. So I need to go from i plus 1 to nth index. Then we have to calculate the right sum. So at any point, if left sum and right sum are same, that means we have to return that index value. If it is zero based indexing, if it is of one based indexing, then we have to return i plus one. So I hope you have got it. So if we don't find any equilibrium index, then we have to return minus one. So this is 
the brute force approach to solve this equilibrium index uh, problem okay so now let's understand the next step like how we can optimize it further so what will be the current time complexity using brute force approach so if you can closely observe the time complexity will be o of n into o of n okay so it's uh, if you see within this ith index ith loop there's o of n plus o of n so it's o of 2n into o of n, which is o of n square only. So I need to optimize this, right? Because o of n square is very bad time complexity. And the, in the interview, they will tell you to optimize this time complexity. So I can optimize it by taking extra space using prefix sum approach. And we can reduce the time complexity from o of n square to o of n. So now let's understand the concept of prefix sum, like how prefix sum can help you to optimize the time complexity of this problem. Okay. So now we will understand the prefix sub approach so here what we are doing so from main method we are passing the array entire array into this method okay we are calculating the length of the array and we are checking like if n is equal to one that means only one value so that is the equilibrium index so that is the edge point that we have to understand like what all corner cases are there that we have to cover okay don't miss out on that then we will be understanding the so if you can observe over here i've calculated a prefix I've taken one array for prefix as well as suffix. Okay. So the zeroth index I have put in the prefix at zeroth index. And I'm running a loop from i equal to one because zeroth index I've already calculated. So from first index to last index, I'm going and I'm calculating the each and every prefix value at each and every index. So I'm adding the i minus one index prefix to the current array. So that at each and every index, I can do the prefix sum and then we can add it up and store it into the prefix at ith index but similarly for suffix because for left we have to calculate and for right also we have to calculate so suffix will start from n minus 2 because for n minus 1 at index we have already stored okay as one so it will start from n minus 2 to 0 at index and similar thing we have to do we have to do i plus 1 because the, it's opposite of this prefix i minus 1 we have to use and here we have to make use of suffix i plus 1 because it's starting from the end and prefix i minus 1 we are using because it's starting from the first so after calculating prefix i and suffix i, we are checking. We'll run a loop again from 0 to n and we are checking like if prefix of i and suffix of i is same or equal, we are returning the i plus 1 if it is 1 based indexing. If it is 0 based indexing, we have to return i. And if it is not found any data, so we have to return minus 1. So like this, we have to do prefix some approach with extra space because we are making use of prefix and suffix two arrays for left and right. Okay, so two part we have to equilibri equilibrically maintain. We have to maintain the both the side prefix part as well as suffix part to calculate a sum and see like whether the sum is same or not. Okay, so like this, we I hope you have understood the concept of prefix as well as suffix. So we are initializing the suffix sum over here, and here we are we are initializing the prefix sum. Okay, so we are storing the zeroth index, and here we are storing the n minus one -th index in suffix of n minus one. So it will be helpful in calculating the suffix index at each and every value, starting from n. And prefix, we are starting from 0 index. So at any index, if prefix i and suffix i are same, then we can see like, yes, it's a equilibrium index. So you can do dry run, you will get to know like how it is working internally. And last ways, with the help of constant space, how we can do, because there we are making use of prefix and uh, suffix array, right? But we don't have to make use of those extra space. We should not take that extra space. Then how can we do that? In interview, they can ask this question, right? So to remove that, we have to make use of pivot concept. So we have to take pivot equal to zero, left equal to zero, right equal to zero. Left and right, we have understood, but pivot we have to take. So that is the pivot index around which we have to see that left part and right part is same or not. Okay, so we are first calculating the right sum. We are running a loop from one to n. We are so we are adding the elements of all the arrays starting from one -th index to last index. We are storing it into a right variable, and then we are running a loop while pivot is less than n minus one. So we have to iterate the pivot over all the elements of the array until the left is not equal to right. So we are running a loop while pivot is less than n minus one and left is not equal to right. Till that point, we have to increase the pivot index by one and right will be decremented with array at pivot. So whatever will be the value at array at pivot, we are reducing it from the right because right is having the entire sum starting from one till the last index. So right will be having the entire sum and we are reducing the array at current pivot index value. Okay, so it's starting at n minus one. So what is the pivot value currently? It's zero. Okay, and here it's already incremented. So pivot value is one. So what is the array at one? Area at one will be removed from the right total value. 
So let's suppose light total value is 15. We are removing the array at, array at first in, uh, index because it's pivot plus plus. So array at one, whatever value of array at one will be there, we are reducing it from the right value. Okay. And then uh, we are calculating array at pivot minus one and we are storing it in a left. Uh, in left variable and then we are checking if left is equal to equal to right we are returning the pivot plus one because it's one best indexing if it is zero best indexing we have to return pivot or else we are returning minus one so like that we can do it in constant space because we are here we are not making use of any array over here because here if you observe in prefix sum we have made use of prefix array and suffix array but here we are not making use of any external arrays to store the data okay so here it is solved in no space at all, constant extra space with O of n time complexity. So this is the much optimized approach to solve the problem. So I hope you understood this pivot concept as well. So if you are facing any kind of problem, do comment it out below and do dry run as well. So if you do dry run, you will get to know like how it is being worked internally. Okay. So this is the entire thing basically. So this is the little bit tricky thing to understand this pivot concept because this thing, if you don't know, this thing might not come into your mind during interview. So that's for that sake only I'm preparing uh, this video so that this concept is when you are practicing, practicing it on a regular basis so that you can tell to the interviewer like how this concept works. Okay. So I hope you got the concept over here. It's nothing basically. So we are taking the pivot value basically left index and right index and we are running a loop from one to la last index because zeroth index is already stored over here. Okay. Zeroth value. Then from I equal to one to N we are calculating the right value, total right from one at index till last, what's the total value of arrays? We are calculating it and storing it in the right. And then we are iterating the pivot over all the elements of the array. And we are checking like if right is not equal to left till that point, we are increasing the pivot by one. And then we are reducing it from the right. So as soon as we reduce the element from the right, then that particular value we can calculate like we are, we can, we are removing that particular index, right? So pivot at one. So pivot at one, we are removing from the entire right. Okay. So the remaining part right will be calculated and left part. We are adding it the array at pivot minus one to the left. Okay. So left value sum will is calculated and right sum is calculated. And then we are checking if left and right is same. That means sum is same. That means we have to return the pivot index value. Okay, so if it is one best indexing, we have to return pivot plus one. If it is zero best index indexing, we have to return pivot. Uh, or else if there is no equilibrium index found, we have to return minus one. I hope you have understood the concept. So this is basically the concept of right and left to calculate the sum without making use of any extra space. Like we are not making use of left and right arrays over here. So directly with this uh, formula, basically this is a kind of formula you can understand for right and left with the help of which you are calculating the left sum and right sum by subtracting and adding from the right variable, the right variable is storing the entire sum of the array starting from first till the length minus one. So you can do dry run, you will get to know like how it is being worked internally. I hope you got the concept. So in the next video, we'll be discussing about some other approaches to solve the array problems like two pointed approach. Okay, Kadan's algorithm, these things we will be understanding. So stay tuned till then for that those videos and we'll be seeing you in the next video. Till then, it's Devjit Roy signing off. Bye bye. Oh, 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 oh,